In this video, we're going to have a look at how you would construct quadratic equations, solve them, and then interpret your solutions. Now, we've looked before at how to solve quadratic equations, but the more advanced type of questions that you could come across will perhaps ask you to actually construct the equation yourself, given certain bits of information. So it's what we might call a CSI question, where you have to construct, first of all, the equation, then you have to solve it, and then you have to interpret the solutions perhaps discarding one of them because it doesn't make any sense, or maybe assigning a value to each of them, depending on how, how the question is worded. So here's an example of the kind of thing that you could come across. So you're told that um, you've got a cuboid, um, you're given uh, three dimensions, you're asked to show that this is actually three. Now, what you need to do is you need to construct that equation. Now, the reason they've given it to you in the question is so that if you can't do part A, at least you can go on and use it and get part B. So the question has been kind of broken down for you. There's no guarantee that you would necessarily have the question broken down for you. Now, because you're given all three dimensions, and you're told that the volume is 24 meters cubed, you can just start off part A by saying that the volume is length times breadth times height. So that means that length times breadth times height is the volume. So you can say x times x plus 5 times 1 is going to be equal to 24. And then when you multiply that out, you get x squared plus 5x is equal to 24. And you can then make the right-hand side equal to 0 by taking 24 away from both sides and you get that x squared plus 5x minus 24 is equal to 0. And that's what you're asked to show for part A. For part B, you're asked to actually work out what the breadth of the cuboid is. Now, the breadth of the cuboid, you can see, is x. So what this question is asking us to do is basically to find the value of x. Now, I've got a quadratic equation for x. So what I do is, to find x, I have to solve the quadratic. Now you'll remember that to solve a quadratic equation, what you have to do is factorize and generate a product that's equal to zero. So if we do that, to factorize the equation that I've boxed up there, I can factorize it quite easily. Factors of 24, it can be used to make five. Um, factors of 24, you get one and 24, two and 12, uh, three and eight, four and six. So 3 and 8 are going to be my choice. Now I want to make positive 5x, so the 8x would have to be positive, the 3x would have to be negative. And so I've got a product equal to 0. So I split my product, I make each part equal to 0, because that's the only two uh, ways that the above line could be true. So I get that x is 3, and I get that x is negative 8. Now, it tells you to find the breadth, <coughs> singular. Now, I've got two values for x, and this is where you have to use your common sense, because what is x? x is a dimension, it's a measurement, so it can't possibly be negative. So you can just say that x cannot be equal to negative 8, okay? So x has to be greater than 0, therefore x is going to be equal to 3, okay? So you've got to explain why it is you're discarding the solution x as negative 8. It makes no sense in this case, and that's you interpreting your solutions. So it's a CSI question. You construct, you solve, and then you interpret. And that's the type of question you could be asked in your exam. Here's another example. <coughs> this time, there's no show that. The question isn't broken down into two parts. It just gives you three dimensions for a right angle triangle and you're asked to find the value of x. Now, because it's the three dimensions of a right angle triangle, you should immediately know you're thinking Pythagoras. You should be well aware that the hypotenuse squared is the sum of the square of the other two sides. So if we do that, we write down that x plus 8, all squared, is equal to x plus 7, all squared, plus x squared. What I end up with is that x squared, plus 16x plus 64 
is equal to x squared plus 14x plus 49 plus the other x squared. That's it as well. Now, what that gives me is that uh, if I tidy everything up, I think what I'll do is I'll uh, rewrite it with the right-hand side equal to um, the left-hand side. So because I've got more x squared on this side, I'm going to write this first. So we'll say 2x squared plus 14x plus 49 is equal to the left-hand side, which is x squared plus 16x plus 64. Now to solve a quadratic equation, you have to make the right-hand side equal to zero. So when I take away x squared from both sides, I end up with x squared on the left. When I take away 16x from both sides, I end up with negative 2x. And then when I take away 64 from both sides, I end up with 15, minus 15. Because 49 plus 15 would give me 64. So I then factorize this. So I split this to generate a product equal to zero. I get x and x as factors of x squared. Five and three would be my factor pair of 15 that can be used to make two. Minus five plus three. So I've got a product equal to zero. So what that means is that either x minus five is zero or x, x plus three is equal to zero. So in other words, x is equal to five, or alternatively, x is equal to negative three. Now, what is x? x is a dimension, so it has to be positive. So you can say x has to be greater than zero, therefore x is equal to five. Okay, so x is greater than zero, so x is equal to five. So that's, again, construct, solve, interpret. That's the type of approach you'd have to take for this kind of question. I'm going to give you two questions to try, uh, one at a time. So here's the first one. So pause the video, see how you get on, and then we'll come back and check over with the solutions. So this first question. You've got a rectangular lawn, which is a path one meter wide on all three sides. Okay, and you're told that the breadth of the lawn is X meters. The length of the lawn is three times its breadth. So because I know that my breadth is X, the length of the lawn must be three X. Okay, so we can add that to our sketch. Now you're told that the area of the lawn is equal to the area of the path. So what you have to do is you have to construct an equation based around that statement, okay? So we're gonna use that as a kind of template we're gonna follow to construct our equation. Now the area of the lawn is going to be length times breadth. In other words, three x times x. So we know that the lawn area is equal to the path area. Now the lawn area is three x times x, so it's gonna be three x squared. Now the path area is a wee bit more complicated because the path is um, it's a composite shape. So what we're going to do is we're going to work out the large rectangle area and then subtract from that the small rectangle area. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to just write, um, I'll write it down as large rectangle area minus small rectangle area. Okay? So Let's have a look and see. Now, the large rectangle is going to have a length of 3x plus 1 plus 1, which is 3x plus 2. So it's going to be 3x plus 2 times the breadth, which is going to be x plus 1. Now, the small rectangle area is just the lawn. And we know that the lawn area already is just 3x times x, which is 3x squared. Now, if I multiply the brackets and tidy up, I end up with 3x squared is equal to, this is going to give me 3x squared plus 3x plus 2x, which is plus 5x, plus 2 minus 3x squared. And then if I tidy everything together, 
I can see that my 3x squareds are cancelling out. And then all I have to do is make the right-hand side equal to 0. And when I do that, I end up with, on the left-hand side, minus 5x. And then I take away 2, so I end up with negative 2 on the left-hand side. And the right-hand side is now equal to 0. And that's what I was asked to show. Okay. Now, again, if you couldn't do part A, there's no reason why you can't do part B, because you're already given your quadratic. So we've done our construction stage. Now we have to solve it, because I want to find the length of the lawn. Now, the length of the lawn, remember, is 3x. You solving this quadratic equation is only going to give you x, so you need to remember to treble x to get the length of the lawn. So if I factorize this, 3x <coughs> times x is going to give me 3x squared. 2 and 1 are the only factor pairs of uh, 2. Now, you have to be careful here when factorizing something like this. You know that because of this negative here, your signs are going to be different. So I know that it's not going to be negative 2x, negative 3x. It gives me negative 5x. It's going to have to be negative 6x plus 1x. Okay, so check your outsides, negative 6x, your insides, 1x. That's going to give you your middle term of negative 5x. So what I end up with is that 3x plus 1 is 0, or that x minus 2 is 0. In other words, I get that x is equal to negative a third, or I get that x is equal to 2. Now, I know that x has to be greater than 0. So therefore, I know that x has to be equal to 2. It doesn't make sense for x to be negative, because it's our length. So that's what x is. So the length of the lawn is going to be 3 times the length of x. So it's going to be 3 times 2, which is 6. And we can put in our units, because we know that x is in meters. So 6 meters is the length of your lawn. So construct, solve, interpret, and that's you. Here's another question for you to try. Um, pause the video, see how you get on, and then check back, see if your answers are correct. So in this question, you're told that the height of the triangle is 2x minus 5, and you're told its base is 2x. You're told the area is 7. Now, there's no equation given to you. You have to construct it. Now, it's all about the area of a triangle. And you know the area of a triangle is half a, b. Uh, half BH, I should say, half the base times the height. So our area is half base times height. Now the area is 7, so 7 is a half times the base times the height. I know that half of 2x is x, so I just say 7 is x brackets 2x minus 5. So I say that 7 is 2x squared minus 5x. And if I take 7 away from both sides, I end up with 0 is 2x squared minus 5x minus 7. Now, if I rewrite that over here, and I'll write it back to front, 2x squared minus 5x minus 7 equals 0. What I can do now is factorize it. I've constructed my quadratic equation. So I'm going to factorize that to give me a product which is equal to 0. Now, factors of 7, 7, and 1. I want uh, negative 5x. So I know the 7x has to be negative. The 2x has to be positive. I split my product and say 2x minus 7 is 0. And I get that x plus 1 is 0. So x is going to be 7 over 2, or x is going to be negative 1. Now, x cannot be negative. x has to be greater than 0. So for that reason, x is equal to 7 over 2, or in other words, 3.5. And we're told that the dimensions are in centimeters. OK? So you've constructed your quadratic equation.
based on the information given, you've solved the quadratic equation, and you then interpreted the solutions, you've discarded one of them because it doesn't make any sense, and you've selected the correct one. So that's how you would do questions of these type. Construct, solve, interpret, not the most straightforward, but with a bit of practice, they are something that you should be able to do. Okay, so I hope that was helpful.